This teaching you're about to listen to was preached by Jagedis Sunday E and recorded live at God's Family Bible Church, Trinidad. Jagedis Sunday E is the general coordinator of Arabs of Revival Ministries and the School of Discipleship. He is also the missionary pastor of GFBC Trinidad under the leadership of Pastor Abology Akimbo, the general overseer of God's Family Bible Church Worldwide, Palm Coast, Florida. Listen and be transformed. Our Father, we thank you because you love us so deeply, Father. We thank you, Lord, because of your love that is demonstrated towards us, even while we were sinners. You sent your son, Lord Jesus, to die for us. Father, we thank you, Lord, because now we have the spirit of sonship. And now, Lord, we have been brought into your family as your sons and as your daughter. And Father, Lord, we come this morning, Lord, with an open heart. And we pray in the name of Jesus that your word will come forth, Father. And we shall have understanding. Lord, we pray, Lord, that every mind, Lord, be open, receptive to your word, Father. That, Father, we will behold the truth, Father. And we will receive the truth and walk with the truth. Thank you, Father. And in Jesus' name we pray. Let the people of God say amen. amen. Now this morning, I want to challenge you uh, to begin to live as an overcomer. Now, pay attention. I'm not asking you to be an overcomer, all right? But I want to show you how you can live as an overcomer. Now, that's very important. So I'll be teaching on the lifestyle of overcomer. Now, this is a series and this is just the part one, all right? Now, it is important for you to know who you are now in Christ and to begin to live just like that. Do you get what I'm talking about? All right. Now, we are not trying to be who God has made us, but we need to know how to live just like that. There are many of us that are still living contrary to our new name, a new nature, a new destiny in Christ. You understand what I'm talking about? And that's what we begin to look at. Let's go back to the Bible reading that our beautiful sister read this morning, the book of First John chapter 5. And I want to us to uh, pay a close attention to the first five verses. First John chapter 5. So this is the lifestyle of overcomer series and this is part one. First John chapter 5, I read from verse 1. Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Do you believe that? Let's all say, I am born of God I am born of because God. I believe I that Jesus that is the Christ. That is the one of God. So if you believe that Jesus is the Christ, then the Bible say you are born of God. And do you know what that means? It simply means you now have the nature of God. You have the DNA of God. Now your children, born of you, they have your DNA. Is that right? Now they have your DNA within them. They have your nature within them. So if you are born of God, then you share of what God has. Do you get what I'm talking about? Alright? And everyone who loves him who be God also love him who is begotten of him. Verse 2. But this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. So you cannot say you love God and you hate me. Alright? Now, verse 3 say, For this is the love of God that we keep his commandment. And his commandment are not bodysome. Now pay close attention to 4 and 5. This is where I'm coming to. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. Now, don't forget, who is born of God is who that believe that Jesus is the Christ. Let's all say, I am born of God. I, born of God. I, overcome, the I overcome the world. All right, you know, this is church and it's like classroom. I need your response. All right. So the Bible says, if you are born of God, you overcome the world. You overcome the world. You overcome the power in the world. You overcome the troubles of this world. The challenges, the trial, the tribulation. Whatever may come up in this world, the Bible says you overcome. Now, pay attention. Now, when God says you overcome the world, that's a simple thing. It means every day you overcome. That's what it means. It means not that you overcome uh, today and tomorrow you are overcome. No, you continue to overcome. All right. So when I'm born again, when I'm born of God, now listen to this. I am wired to overcome. I have the DNA of God to overcome. It is my nature to overcome. Let's all say I am born of God. Oh, all right, we could do better. Say, I am born of God. It is my nature to overcome. So, every 
every child of God, every believer, everyone who truly believes in Christ, it is now your nature. In other words, it is natural for you to overcome. Yes. Now, it shouldn't be something you struggle to do. Now, just like dog, now listen to me, dog does not struggle to bat. If your dog struggles to bat, then you need to take your dog to the vet. Yes. You understand? Because it is natural for dog to bat. So the Bible says, if you are born of God, it is natural for you to overcome. Is it sin? Is it sickness? Is it life challenges? It is natural. It is your nature. It is your nature. Alright? It is now your identity. So, as a child of God, now listen to me. Now, your name is now an overcomer. Your nature is now to overcome. You are wired. You are programmed by God to overcome. All that it takes to overcome is now in you. It's now in you. You don't, now listen to me, you don't try to be an overcomer. You are an overcomer. You are born again as what? An overcomer. I am born again as a victor, as a winner, as a champion. I am born again as a sorcerer. I'm not trying to be that. God made me like that. You, you understand what I'm talking about? All right, he said, and, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Now, do you know why I overcome the world? It's because I've got victory over the world. And the Bible says, our faith in Christ, our faith in what he did for us on the cross, that is what gave us the victory. And we're going to look at this very closely because it's important for us to understand it. Verse 5 says, Who is he who overcome the world? He will believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Do you believe Jesus is the Son of God? Amen. Then welcome to our class. Class of overcomers. So you understand? Amen. Now, so those who believe in Christ, they are overcomers. Let's say, I am born. I am born. As an overcomer. As an overcomer. Now, this is your new name. If there's anything I want you to understand in this part, one is that you have a new name. You are now an overcomer. You have a new nature. You have a new identity. You have a new identity. Are you paying attention to me? But pastor, you, you don't know my history. I have failed several times. I have proof to show my failure. A lot of things over, has overcome me in the past. I have a lot of things I'm struggling with. I have addiction. I have sin that I keep falling into. Alright? Oh, you don't know? I failed in relationship. I failed. I have marriages that I failed before. So what are you talking about? And I'm a believer. I've given my life to Christ. That's exactly what I'm talking about. That's why we are looking at this. Now, it's me you are not living according to your name, according to your nature. Do you understand what I'm saying? The fact that you fail does not change your nature. The fact that you have things that are overcoming you or that have overcome you does not nullify who you are in Christ Jesus. The only issue is that you have not come to really know the truth. You have not come to understand who you are and how to express, how to live, how to deal with life situation according to who you are. Do you get what I'm talking about? And that's what I wanted to learn. That is the purpose of this teaching series. All right? You are an overcomer. You are born like that. Nothing can change that nature. Do you get it? What I'm talking about? Nothing can change it. You are born as an overcomer. As a victor, as a champion, as a winner. That is who you are. That is who you are. Failure cannot change it. Do you get it? Failing cannot change it. It cannot. There is nothing the devil can do. It is too late. Now, to overcome in Greek is nikao. It means to conquer, to prevail. It means to subdue. It means to get the victory. Do you understand what I'm talking about? <laughs> now, this is very important. This is Now, look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Now, it is possible for you to have a name and nature, all right, and yet you are not bearing it. You are not bearing it. Now, many of us, the reason why we are not expressing uh, uh, who we are is because we are tied to what we used to be. Do you get what I'm talking about? Now, there are people, there are believers that believe in Christ Jesus, and the Bible says, if you believe in Christ, you are born of God, and then you are born as overcomer. That is who you are. So, in the spirit, all right, now, I am an overcomer, all right? Now, in the natural, I may be failing, all right? But in the spirit, 
in Christ Jesus, that is who I am. The devil knows it, all right? But the challenge is that I'm still used to what I used to be. I'm still stuck with what I used to be. Many of us, that is the challenge. We are stuck with our past experience. We are stuck with our past identity. I have failed before. I've written exams. I have failed. So I am a failure. Are you in Christ? Do you believe in Christ? You are not a failure. Right. Oh, I have failed. Marriages have been into two, three marriages. They have failed. That means I'm a failure. No, if you are in Christ, you are not a failure. You are not. Now, you need to change that. Right. You need to begin to answer who you really are. Who yeah. you really are. That's Do you right. get what I'm talking about? Yeah. Now, that's so important for you to understand. Yeah. Now, we need, you know, when we give a life to Christ, we don't just answer, I'm a child of God. No, we need to find out who we are now as children of God. Right. Do you get what I, and what I wanted to know is that as a child of God, as a believer, you are an overcomer. You are a conqueror. Do you get what, you are a victor. You are a winner. Now, your experiences in the past, all right, things that you have gone through, they have said, no, that is not who you are. But you have to choose who you are going to believe. Is it your past experience or is it God? Do you get what I'm talking about? And I'm telling you that that is who you are. You need to be established in that. That is how things are going to change. Oh, I used to be a failure. But now I am a new creation in Christ. I'm born of God. God says I am no longer a failure. I am a success. I have past records of my failure. Are you with me? Now, if things are going to change, then you need to start answering to what God called you now. Do you get what I'm talking about? You need to start seeing yourself now as a success. You need to start carrying yourself like that. You need to start thinking like that. You need to start speaking like that. You need to start acting like that. If anybody calls you a fellow, you tell them, oh, you didn't know I have dropped that name long time ago. Yes. Do you get it? Now, that is how things are going to change. And that's what I want to share with you in this series. You are born as an overcomer and you need to find out how do overcomers live? The lifestyle of overcomer. How do overcomer think? How do they speak? How do they deal with life challenges? That's what we are going to be learning. Alright, look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. I read from verse 16. He said, I'm reading New King James. He said, therefore, from now on. Let's say from now on. <laughs> now, you need to make a departure like that. From now on, all right? Now, he said, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him thus no longer. That, that's very important. Now, Paul here is saying, well, from now on, we change the way we see things. Yeah. We used to just judge Christ as a human being, all right? Just one like God. No, we judge him from human point of view. So Paul is saying, no, you need to change that. He said, from now on, we regard. It means we consider not. All right? So that's exactly what we need to begin to do. All right? We need to start, stop seeing ourselves just as we are naturally. You are much more than that. We need to start uh, assessing ourselves, evaluating ourselves, just based on our natural experiences and circumstances. That is not all that define us. Do you get what I'm talking about? We need to start regarding ourselves from God's point of view. We need to start seeing ourselves as God sees us. Do you get what I'm talking about? That's what he's talking about. From now on, we change the way we see ourselves. We change the way we judge things, all right? We change our opinion about ourselves. Many of all, that is our challenge. We have not changed our own opinion about ourselves since we have become born again. We are stuck with people's opinion about us. No, you need to change that. From now on, you want to begin to experience the victory that is just in Christ. Then from now on, stop regarding yourself based on what somebody else says. You need to change your perspectives about yourself. You need to find out from the mirror of God's war who you really are, what you really are, and get stuck with that. And be a da, we are da, without any apology to anyone. Do you get what I'm talking about? That's what Paul is talking about, verse 17. He said, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, are you in Christ? Do you believe in Christ? He is what? A new creation. Let somebody shout, I'm a new creation because I'm in Christ. I want you to preach it to us and say, I am a new creation because I am in Christ. So when you are in Christ, join together with Christ, united with Christ. Now the scripture says, you are 
are born anew. Now, the word new there is kainos. It means unprecedented. It means that type has never existed. Now, this is very important. He said, all things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. He didn't say all things are passing away. Now, pay attention, God's people. The scripture didn't say things are passing away. He said they are pass away. Alright? Now, you know what he's talking about. You know this when you became born again. Now, your, your body, your physical man didn't pass away. Alright? Never change. Alright? Your soul, the things you know, your emotion remain the same. But you are not just a bunch of flesh. You are a spirit being. Are you with me? You are spirit, soul, and body. Now, so what God is saying that your spirit change. God put in you a new man, a new spirit. Now, your spiritual condition change when you believe in Christ. Are you with me? Now, your spiritual being Chain. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Now, who you are, your nature change, your status change, your spiritual condition change. And God is saying, you need to acknowledge that. You need to recognize that. That my spiritual condition has changed. My spiritual status has changed. My position has changed. Within me, you may look at me and still think, oh, it's still the same failure. It's still the same uh, victim. No, I have changed within. Do you get it? Now, the real being, the real being spirit that carries me about has changed. It's now an overcomer. Are you with me? It's not a winner, not a loser anymore. Are you with me? It's not the master, not a slave that he used to be. Now, you need to know that. You need to hold fast onto that. That's what that scripture is talking about. Galatians 4, 7 said, Therefore, you are no longer a slave. You see the scripture putting emphasis to what you are now. Alright? So there must be a departure in your mind. I need to reprogram my mind now to accept my new identity in Christ. That's what, that's what coming to church is all about, all right? Now, it's for you to know who you are, what God made you now in Christ. Are you with me? And to reprogram your mind. That's what the church is all about. That's why we listen to the word of God to renew our mind. Are you with me? To make us to begin to think according to who God has made us now in Christ Jesus. Because if we don't think like that, we will still continue to live as we used to live, all right? So you have a lot of new creation that are living like the old creation. Yes. No, that shouldn't be. That shouldn't be. Now, so you have lots of overcomers in Christ that are living as defeated people. Yes. You have people who are winners in Christ. Are you with me? But they are still living as, as losers. No, you have to change that. Yes. You have to start living according to who you are in the spirit. Yes. Who you are in the spirit. You are no longer a slave. Yes. And the Bible says you are a son. And if a son, then you are an heir of God through Christ. And Romans 8, 16 say, the spirit himself be a witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Do we have children of God in the house? Yes. Now take note verse 17. So if children, then we are heirs of God and joint us with Christ. Let's not say I'm a child of God. I'm joined here with Christ. Now, pay attention now. Pay attention now. Now, you see, as Christians, now, we are as children of God, we are not trying to have victory. Now, pay attention. We are not trying to overcome. All right? We already have the victory. Do you know why? Because Christ won the victory. And the Bible says, as children of God, whatever Christ has, we share with him. That's what it means to be a joint here. It means to be a co-inheritor. That is what being a child of God is. A co-inheritor with Christ. Are you with me? Now, that's what being a child of God is. Now, so you don't identify with your generational family cause anymore. Are you with me? You are co-inheritor of the blessings of God with Christ. So you see yourself as blessed. Yes. Are you with me? Oh, but you are still part of that family. You tell the person, I'm a joint here with Christ. If Christ has it, I have it. If he does not have it, then I don't have it. And he has the victory. Do you get what I'm talking about? Now, you see, this is so important to understand that before I fight any battle, I have overcome already. You say, but you have never been to the ring. Do you know what? Christ defeated the devil for me. He fought all the battles for me. He won it for me. Do you get what I'm And the Bible says, his victory now is not my my personal victory. So as a Christian, you need to know this. You are not going to be an overcomer. You are an overcomer already. You are not going to have the victory. You have the victory already. 
Do okay, you get what I'm talking about? Now look at 1 Corinthians 15 verse 57. The book of 1 Corinthians 15 verse 57. But thanks be to God who give us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now listen to this. Victory is a gift from God to all those who are in Christ Jesus. It's a victory. It's a gift from God. Now do you know what it means? It means that I didn't fight for it. Oh, it is not fasting and praying and do all that that brings the victory. No, victory comes through Jesus and Jesus alone and what he did. Do you get it? Oh, but, but pastor, I don't know how to pray for long. Oh, pastor, I don't know so many scriptures. Pastor, I, I, I can't fast for seven days. Now, that is not what brings the victory. Do you get what I'm talking about? The victory comes through Jesus and what he did for you on the cross. And once you believe in Christ, you have the victory. That's what the scripture says. Say so, victory comes through who? Through our Lord Jesus, not through us, not through our efforts. So, you see, many Christians they are trying to overcome the reason why I fast, the reason why I pray, the reason why I go to church, the reason why I give my offering, the reason why I do this so that I can overcome. No, you are in unbelief. You are in unbelief. Now, you need to start from the point of victory. I am fighting this battle because I know I am an overcomer. I have got the victory, and every battle of life is an opportunity for me to manifest who I am already. Do, do you get it? So, I am a victor, I'm an overcomer. Come on, and when the devil shows up, that gives me opportunity to show to the devil and show to the world who God has made me to be in Christ. That's what being a child of God is. So you are not trying, oh, I'm trying to overcome this sin. I'm trying to stop being an angry person. That's why you have not overcome all this while. You need to first realize that you overcome this. Are you with me? Yeah. And when there's an opportunity to get angry, you say, no, this is my opportunity to prove that I'm not a slave of sin anymore. Amen. Do you get it? They are not slave of a wide emotions anymore. That's an opportunity. That's an opportunity. Now, you are not trying to, oh, I'm trying to hold myself so that, no, 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 no. You are in unbelief. You are missing it. Lad. Now, so you need to be rooted in your identity. Romans 8 and 7, the Bible says, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him. Now, you see the scripture put emphasis. How our victory came. He said, it is through him, through Christ Jesus. We love us. 1 John chapter 2, the book of 1 John chapter 2. I cannot overemphasize this. This foundation is important. That I need to know I am born again as an overcomer. Now in Christ Jesus, my name, my identity, my nature has changed. I'm not a loser anymore. I'm not a victim anymore. I'm not a captor anymore. I'm an overcomer. I'm a winner. When they call champion, that is who I am. That's who I am. All right? Now 1 John chapter 2. He said, I write to you little children because you're sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. Let's not say my sins are forgiven. <laughs> Many of all, the devil is still using that old against you. And keep reminding you of the past mistake. You need to know what the scripture say. You are forgiven. You are forgiven already. You need to let that go beyond. You understand? You are justifying Christ. You are washing Christ. Oh, yeah, I, it was my mistake. I did it that way. No, forget about that. Your sins are forgiven. Your sins are forgiven. All right. Verse 13 say, I write to you, Father. Now, this is John the Beloved writing to the church, and he lay emphasis on the truth that he was communicating. He said, because you have known who is from the beginning, I write to you, young man. Now, pay attention to verse 13, please. He said, I write to you, young man, because you have what? Overcome the wicked one. That's what I'm saying. I have overcome, I have overcome the wicked one. The wicked one. That's the devil. That is the gospel truth. You are not trying to overcome. You have overcome already. Are you with me? Now all that you need to do is to enforce that victory. To demonstrate that victory. To tell the devil, I am the victor here. I am the one that has the victory. You are the challenger. And you are not going to take this victory from me. Alright? So when the devil comes against us, we are not trying to win over the devil. Are you with me? No. Now it's like this. Now let, let, let me 
Let me paint this picture. Maybe it will help. It's like you have an elder brother, a trained boxer, all right? Somebody that knows how to fight very well. Then you have a challenger. Somebody come to challenge you, all right? And then your elder brother takes up the battle. And then he fights and then wins the person. And then he breaks all his bones. Are you with me? Are you paying attention? And not only that, then he changed the person for you, all right? And the person is still there, not dead, all right? He can still speak, but he can't do anything, all right? He's rendered powerless. He has been rendered ineffective. Do you get what I'm talking about? He's just in operation. He's right there. Um, but you are there now, all right? And you heard that brother say, the battle is won. But this person is still charging you with his mouth. I say, I'm going to come after you. I'm going to fight you. I'm going to kill you. All right? What can he do? He's down on the floor. His bones are broken. He's in chain. And do you know what? That is exactly what Jesus did to the devil. But the devil can still talk. The devil can still put some thoughts in your heart. The devil can still show you some negative dreams and vision. And many of us are still afraid. Many of us are still running from one false prophet to the other. From one spiritualist to the other. What are you looking for? What are you running away from? You have got the victory. Jesus, your elder brother, has defeated the devil. He has granted him. He has stripped him of his power and authority. Do you get what I... That's exactly what I'm talking about. You've got the victory. And when the devil charge at you, I say, what are you talking about? You can't do anything. And just with a one blow, the devil is back on the floor again. Do you get what I'm talking about? Just one blow, he's back on the... Just you open your mouth and speak the word of God, the devil is down again. Because you have got the victory already. You have got the victory. Don't let anybody talk you out of it. Don't let your experience talk you out of it. Don't let your circumstances talk you out of it. Don't let your challenges talk you out of it. Don't let what people say talk you out of it. Be rooted in your new name and identity. I am an overcomer. It doesn't matter what I'm experiencing. It doesn't matter my struggle. I know who I am in Christ. I am an overcomer. I am a winner. I'm a champion. I'm more than conqueror. But listen to this. That is where it starts from. That's where it starts from. Alright, that's where it starts from. Verse 14. I've written to you, Father, because you have known who is from the beginning. I've written to you, young men, because you are strong. Let someone say, I am strong. strong. Men of us still claim weakness. No. In Christ Jesus, you are strong. You are a joint here. You share his strength with him. He said, you are strong and the word of God abides in you and you have overcome the wicked one. You see the emphasis there? First John 4, 4, the same thing he repeated. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them. It doesn't matter how many people rise against you. The Bible says you have what? Overcome them. You have overcome them. It doesn't matter how many people vow to be your enemy. The Bible says you have what? overcome them. It doesn't matter how many challenges you may face in life. The Bible says you have what? Overcome them. Do you know how you overcame? Because he who is in you is greater, greater, greater than he who is in the world. That's what I'm talking about. You know, so what I'm saying is that we need to understand who God made us to be in Christ yeah, yeah. and stick with that yes. regardless of how we feel yes. alright regardless of how things appear in the natural because we know there is something greater than what we can see we know that what we see what we feel the circumstances are you with me they are temporary they are temporary there is a truth greater than the physical reality and that is what the word of God says. So we need to start bearing our name with boldness. We need to start being rooted and carrying ourselves in our new identity as an overcoming in Christ. That is your new identity. So wear it without any apology. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Now, is this sin? Now, you see... A lot of us struggle with all those bad habits and sinful habits. And the reason we try every time on our own to overcome, the reason why we struggle like that is because we have failed to, first of all, acknowledge who we are now in Christ as it relates to sin. Now look at Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. 
I take that. I just want to lay a solid foundation and then we continue to build on it from next week. All right, Romans chapter 6, knowing this. Let's all say knowing this. <laughs> now, so you need to know this. Oh, you have some uh, challenges with sin, addiction. Oh, I've been trying to quit smoking. I've been trying to quit uh, drinking, but pastor, it's so difficult. It is because you are trying to do it on your own. Yeah. It's because you are trying to overcome. You have not seen yourself as an overcomer. You are not dealing with it as who? He who has overcome. Yeah. You are yeah. dealing with it as a challenger, as a contender. No, you are not the challenger. You are not the contender. You are the champion. You are the champion. Yeah. Do, do you understand what I'm talking about? Yeah. Have you ever watched a competition like that, like a boxing? You have the champion, the one who has the belt. And then you have a challenger, a contender. All right? We want to get the, 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 the belt. Now, many of us, that's the way we approach things. We approach as contender, as challenger. No, you are the champion. You are the champion. All right? That's the way you need to see yourself. So the Bible says, knowing this, that our old man, our old man talks of our sinful nature, was crucified. Let's not say crucified. Crucified. Okay. With who? With Christ. That the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. All right? You have sin issue that you are dealing with. The Bible says you need to know that your sin nature has been put to death, crucified with Christ. All right? Now, now, let's read for that. You understand. For he who has died has been what? Free from sin. Let's all say free from sin. Free from, free from sin. sin. So the Bible says when your sin nature is dead, put to death, then you are free from sin. Yes. <laughs> now that is what you need to know. Now our sin nature is our natural tendency and inclination to sin. But when we gave our life to Christ, that nature was crucified with Christ, the old man, and we have a new nature, God's own nature. The Bible says we became partakers of divine nature of God. Now you need to know that truth. You need to know that truth. Now that does not mean you can not be tempted, but now you have every right to say no to temptation. You are not a slave to any sin anymore. Now, when, let me read further. You get what he's talking about? He read from verse, verse 11. Let me move to verse 11. He said, likewise you also reckon yourself. Let's not say reckon yourself. Reckon. Now, that word reckon is very important. It's the Greek word logizoma. Now, listen to what it means. It's an account word. It means to calculate, to compute, to count over, alright? Just like you count your money over, alright? It is to take into account, to consider, to meditate on, to judge, to reason, to deem. All right. Now it's like now you are, you are falling or you, you go to the bank and you are keeping your record. Uh, you put uh, ten thousand, you withdraw three thousand, and then you calculate it that oh yes, now I have seven thousand in the account. All right. So when you go to the bank, what are you expecting to me? Seven thousand. That is what you reckon. That's what you've calculated. That is the fact. And if it is less than that, you have every right to query uh, the bank manager. What have you done with my money? That's what the Bible is saying. That you need to reckon yourself like that. Consider it like that. That is what it is. That as ch children of God, you are dead indeed to sin. Let's not say I'm dead I'm indeed to sin. Indeed to sin. Now, so many Christians approach sin as when we still are alive to it. No, Christians are dead to sin. He said, but they are only alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Verse 12. Therefore, do not let sin reign. That's what you do. You do not let sin reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in his laws and do not present your members as instrument of righteousness to sin, but present yourself to God as being alive from the dead and your members as instrument of righteousness to God. 14 now, for sin shall not have dominion over you for you are not under law but under God. Let's not say sin has no dominion. Sin has no dominion. Over, me. over me. So in other words, oh, let's say anger has been the issue. Or maybe drunkenness. Or maybe you are struggling. You want to quit smoking. Now pay attention to this. Oh, many Christians will say, oh, oh Lord, deliver me from this. No, that's not the way to get out of it. You need to recognize that he has delivered you. All right? The day you say, I believe in Christ and I confess him as my Lord and Savior. The Bible says you identify with Christ. That's what it means. And every victory that Christ has, you have it. You are delivered. All right? Sin has no more dominion over your life. So the first thing I recognize is, 
who God has made me. I am free from this sin, all right? My sin nature is crucified. I can say no to sin. Sin cannot rule over me anymore. My desire cannot control me, all right? So when I have a desire and hold on a feeling to go and pick another cigarette or to go and get another bottle or to go and do something else, all right? So what do I say to my desire? I am the master. You are not the master anymore. Amen. That is how you deal with sin. Do you get what I'm talking about? You don't say, oh, oh, this thing has come. No, you are the one in charge now. You are not a victim. You are not a slave to that desire anymore. You are not a slave to your emotions anymore. You have every right to say no. That's what the Bible says. Sin, do not let sin reign over your life. That's right. Now, you, the Bible will not command us not to allow sin not to reign if we don't have the ability to say no. That's right. So as Christian, you don't try to fight with it. You just say no. This desire... I'm not granting it. Yes. Now, and when you are rooted and established in that, do you know what? You suppress that desire and the desire away away in your life. Yes. Do, do you understand what I'm talking about? After a while, you realize that you can't even see, you can't even feel any trace of that desire anymore. Do you know why? Because yes. now you know who you are. And then you speak with that conviction in your heart. I am not a slave of sin, all right? Anybody can press my button, provoke me. I refuse to get angry because I'm not a slave to anger. Do you get what I'm talking about? I am dead to anger and I'm not getting angry, all right? And then when the anger says, but you have right, he said, no, I am not getting angry. You tell the devil, this is who is in charge. I am in charge. The new creation is in charge. That's what I'm talking about. So as a Christian, we don't try to overcome in our strength. We don't try to fight in our power. We don't impose discipline on ourselves so that we can have the victory. No, we need to see that we have it effortlessly. We have victory on the platter of gold. It was given to us as a gift of God. So we take it as a gift and then we speak from that point. We speak with that understanding. I am a victor. I'm an overcomer. I am dead to sin. I'm alive only unto God. I'm not alive to this evil desire. I am not practicing this again because I have every right to say no because sin has no dominion over me. The flesh cannot rule over me anymore because those who are in Christ, they have crucified the flesh with his desire. My flesh is crucified with Christ. I'm only answerable. I'm only a slave to God, not to any desire, strange desires anymore. So once you begin to have that identity, that mentality, that mindset, you realize that there is no sin you cannot overcome. There's no temptation you cannot walk over because you are not doing it in your strength. Are you with me? You are taking hold, appropriating what has already been done and you are declaring it with understanding. Do you understand what I'm talking about? All right? That is important. Now, when you are dealing with the devil, it is the same thing. All right? Now, you don't try and say, oh, ah, the devil has come again. I had this dream. I had this something. I'm going to fast three days so that I can overcome it. No, you are already acting, not as an overcomer. Yeah. Do you get what I'm talking about? So when the devil show me a dream and show me a vision or send people to me that I'm going to die, he's going to kill me, and then I laugh at the devil and say, I don't know, you have forgotten the scripture, all right? I've already overcome. Christ has defeated you. I have the victory. You can't do anything because he that lives in me is greater than you. Do you understand? Now, so you don't try to fight a fresh battle with the devil, no. You only enforce the victory that Christ has given to you using the authority that Christ has given to you. Look at what the scripture say Colossians 2 15 having designed principalities and power the Bible say he made a public spectacle of them triumphing over them in it so Christ triumphed over the devil over demons over principalities and power through the cross do you get it that is where the victory is won it is not my fasting and prayer that wins victory it is the death of Jesus on the cross do you get what I'm talking about that wins the victory and the Bible says Hebrew 2 14 in a small then as children are partaking of flesh and blood, he himself, that is Jesus, likewise sharing the same, that through death, take note of that, through death, he might destroy him who had the power of death, that is the devil. So it is through the death of Jesus that the power of the devil is destroyed. The word destroy is the Greek word katageo. It means to deprive of force, influence and power, to cause a person to have no further efficiency, to make of null effect, to bring to naught. So the Bible says, when Jesus was dead, 
nailed to the cross, he did something to the devil. Do you know what he did to the devil? The Bible said he deprived him of his power. He spoiled him. He disarmed him. He stripped him of his armor. Stripped him of his authority over your life, alright? So when the devil charged at me, now listen to this, so when the devil charges at me, I know he has no power against me. He has no armor that he can use against me. I know his power over me is rendered inefficient. I know what is threatening. He cannot do it. He cannot do it. So I will not be afraid of the devil. Do you get what I'm talking about? I will not try and say, I'm wrestling with the devil so that I can win the devil. No. I know the devil is won for me already. The devil is defeated for me already. And I stand my ground and tell the devil, I know what I have. I know who you are. You are defeated. I am the overcomer. I am the champion here. I am the winner here. You are the loser here. And you confront the devil with that. Now listen to me. That is what it means to live as an overcomer. He's not trying to overcome. No, you have overcome. Tell somebody, say, you have overcome. Stop trying to overcome. So Christ overcame for you. Now, receive it. You are a joint with Christ. Believe in what he has done. That is what it means to believe in Christ. That what he did, he did it for you. Make his victory your victory. Do you get what I'm talking about? Christ's victory is your personal victory. Personalize it like that. Now, that's what the Bible says your mother conqueror, all right? Now, carry the bed and wear it as he who has overcome. Oh, you have never been to the battle. You say, yes, victory is given to me as a gift. Amen. It's given as a gift to us, all right? And do you know something? That's what I want to show you, how you can live as an overcomer, all right? The lifestyle of the overcomer. That's what we've been looking at in this series. The mindset. How does an overcomer should think? How do you now think as an overcomer? All right? What should be your mindset? How do you relate with situation? How do you deal with temptation to sin? How do you deal with, with the devil's attack? When the devil attacks you, when somebody brings a negative prophecy, when you see a negative thing, how do you deal with it? How do you handle it? You shouldn't handle it like the unbelievers. Are you with me that are still captives of the devil. You are not captives of the devil. You shouldn't deal with sin or sinful abuse as an unbeliever who is dead in sin. You are alive unto God. You are dead to sin. There should be a difference in the way Christians who are overcomers and who know they are overcomers, how they relate and deal with challenges of life. Do you get it? That is what is called the lifestyle of overcomer. And we look at just one and then we continue less, next week, all right? So how do overcomers live? I've just looked at one. Overcomers live by faith on the word of God, all right? In other words, overcomers live by the word of God. Overcomers live on the word of God. Let's say I'm an overcomer. I'm an overcomer. I live by the word of God. I wanted to try and say I'm an overcomer. I live on the word of God. So overcomers are people, all right, who know they are overcomers, and so their lifestyle is that they live by the word of God, they live on the word of God, and that's what we're going to look at now. So what does it mean to live by the word? What does it mean to live on the word of God? Now, when the tempter, when the devil came to Jesus, now Jesus said in Matthew chapter 4 verse 4, popular scripture, he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceed from the mouth of God. That preposition by in Greek is also translated as horn. So it's the same thing I say, but live on the word that proceed from the mouth of God. Now, so Jesus said, Jesus, the first overcomer, all right? The ultimate overcomer, I said, the lifestyle of overcomer is that they live by the word of God. They live on the word of God, all right? And don't forget, you are an overcomer. You are not trying to be. What we are looking at is how you should live. You get it? That's why he said the lifestyle of overcomer. Not that when you live on the word of God, that makes you an overcomer. No, you are an overcomer. And then you should live by the word. You should live on the word so that you can continue to manifest your victory. Do you understand what I'm talking about? So we're going to look at that. So what does it mean to live by the word of God? Or what does it mean to live on the word of God? Number one, it means to highly esteem God's words above the words of any man. That's what it means. 
So, overcomers, now, if you also want to begin to live as an overcomer, you want to live out your true identity, you want to live according to your name and your new nature in Christ, now listen to this, then you need to start regarding the word of God and esteeming the word of God above whatever anybody says. Do you get what I'm talking about? So that is the way overcomer lives. Overcomer regard the opinion of God the view of God, what God has said about them, about their lives, about their situation, about their circumstances, above what any expert says. So this is how overcomers live. Overcomers knows that by the stripes of Christ, they are healed. And when the expert, when the doctor look at them and say, we find all this wrong with your body, and uh, that means you may not live long, all right? Overcomer does not live their life based on what that expert say. No, they live based on what the word of God say. In other words, they regard what God God has said in his word as the final authority. Amen. You get it? That's the way overcome and live. That's the way that I want you to begin to live. Amen. That what God says about your life, not what someone says, not what your head says about you, all right? Not what uh, your friend says about you. No, what God says, not what the doctor says, all right? Not what the culture says, not even what your mind says, not what your emotions or feelings says, not what your bank account says. Are you with me? Not what the symptoms of sickness in your body says, but what God says, that must be the final to you. Amen. That must be your last authority. Amen. That must be what you believe, what you hold on to, what you regard. That is the lifestyle of overcoming. Amen. All right? The psalmist says, now look at David. Oh, David will never lost any battle. Look at what he said. He said, therefore, all your precepts concerning all things. Psalm 119 verse 128. All your precepts concerning all things, I consider to be right. That is the thinking of the overcomer. Overcomer consider to be right everything that God says. Let's say everything. 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 So everything the word of God says about you, amen. that is right. Yes, amen. So that means whatever you say, if it is contrary to what God says, then you are wrong. Yes. <laughs> That's what the overcomer says. Oh, oh, yeah, but, 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 I, but I check your body and no, say you are wrong. What God says is right. I have the peace of God. Yes. Do you get what I'm talking about? All right. That's what God says. Oh, yes. Somebody said, but look at you. Uh, you are this, you are that. But is that what God says? If that is not what God said, then you tell the person you are blind. You are not seeing right. I know who I am because who I am is what God says that I have. Now look at look, look at what it says. Now Romans 3, 4, it says, let God be true, but every man a liar. So anyone that says anything to you, contrary to what God says in his word, the Bible says his word is a liar. Hold that person a liar. You are a liar. Your feelings may lie to you. Are you with me? Your emotions, your body, all right, may lie to you. You tell him, no, what God said, that's what I believe. God is true. And every other thing that is contrary to what God says is what is a lie. Is a liar. That's what the Bible says. Isaiah chapter 8 verse 20. Now listen to this. If somebody look at you like this and say you are ugly, you are not beautiful, you tell the person, oh, I don't know, you have gone blind. All right? Because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. All right? Now anybody that says anything contrary to what God says about you, that person is blind. He's not seen as God sees. That's what the scripture says. And you need to know that. That is why you need to know who you are. You need to be established in that. Now people can say anything. Are you with me? They may say you are no good. No, you are good. All right. Now the person say, "Well, you, are, you tell the person, well, that is your own estimation. All right. And I can see you are really blind. Now look at what the Bible says. Isaiah eight, chapter twenty. He said to the Lord and to the testimony, if they do not speak according to this word, according to the word of God, it is because there is no light in them. That's what the Bible says. In fact, New Living Translation. Please put New Living Translation. Make it very simple. I said, look to God's instructions and teachings. People who contradict his words, they are what? Completely in the dark. They are blind. That's what he's talking about. So anybody that says anything contrary to the word of God, the Bible says regard that person as blind as in the dark. Yes. Don't hold that opinion seriously. But do you know why many of us have not been living as overcomers? We hold so firmly. We hold, we esteem, we regard opinions of people who are in the dark. Opinions of people who are blind. Yes. Are you with me? And we hold on to that. And we, keep, we are allowed to keep playing in our mind what somebody said, what somebody uh, did to you. No, friend. 
Now you are not living as an overcomer that you are. Overcomer don't regard people's opinion above God's opinion. Overcomer don't regard people's perspective above God's perspective. Overcomer regard what God says as the final authority. They regard it as the truth. That is how God wants you to begin to live. You've written an exam and then you fail. And then you have the result and the result shows you that you are a failure. Are you with me? Now, you don't regard that as the final thought. You say, no, I failed this one, but I'm not a failure. I'm going to do it again. Are you with me? That is the way overcome a thing. I'm going to study hard again. And by the help of God, I'm passing this paper again. That is the way. Overcome and don't accept it and, and begin to carry it as their final record. No, God's record about you, that's the final record. And in God's record, there is no failure for you. Do you get what I'm talking about? So whatever record that is presented to you, that is contrary to God's record, you have the right of God to change it. You don't accept it. You don't tie your life to that. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, your marriage failed, your relationship failed, then move away from that. Don't regard yourself as a failure. Don't label yourself as good for nothing. Are you with me? That is not who you are. That's not who you are. You stop thinking like that, it means that man is not good enough for you. You, you understand? Then you move on. Move on with your life. That's the way overcome and live. That's the way. Overcome and don't live in the past. Overcome and don't live in their past failure, past experience. They live in the word of God. They live by the word of God. They live on the word of God because what God says is true. That's the truth. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Look at John chapter 8. The book of, that's how overcome and live. And that is how God wants you to begin to live so that you can begin to express your true nature, your true name, your true identity as an overcomer. All right? Enough of bearing name that God has not called you. Enough of wearing identity that God has not put on you. You need to get rid of them. Get rid of them. John 8, 30, 31, 32. Jesus spoke to the Jews who believe in him. Look at what he told them. That Jesus said to those Jews who believe in him, if you abide in my word, then you are my disciple indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Let's all say abide. abide. Now, that is the way overcomer lives. Overcomer abide in the word of God. Do you know what it means to abide? It's the Greek word called meno. It means to continue, to dwell. That's what it means. It means to keep, to tarry, to not to depart from it. It means to dwell in it, to continue in it. That's what it means. Now, so overcomer don't just listen to the word of God. Listen to a message on Sunday alone. No, that's not the way overcome and live. They continue in the word of God. Are you with me? Now, they go back home to read the word of God. They go back home to study the word of God. They go back home to check their notes. They don't just close their notes. And the next time they open it, when they show up in church again, they don't just close their Bible. And the next time they remember it is when they come to church again. That is not the lifestyle of an overcomer. When you live like that, you are not going to live out your real identity. Do you get what I'm talking about? Yes. So overcomers, now listen to me, they don't just regard the word of God as final authority, they continue in the word of God. They don't just hear once, they continue to hear. They don't just read once, they continue to read. And do you know what? In this ministry, that's what we are trying to do. That's why we have our radio hub. That's why we have the ministry hub. That's why we have our podcast. That's why we send daily devotional. Because that is the way overcomers lead. They continue in the word of God. Yes. They don't just read once a week. No, they don't just uh, uh, meditate in it once a time. No, you have to make it a practice. It has to be your habit because what you are doing, you are developing, you are cultivating the habit of an overcomer. So overcomer has an habit. They are addicted to the word of God. Every time they check what the word of God has said, that is the way overcomer live. Now listen to me. When you continue in the word of God, Jesus said, that John that we read, he said, you will know the truth. Let's say you will know the truth. Now, the reason why many of us, even though we are overcomers, we are not living as overcomers because we do not know the truth. And Jesus said, you don't know the truth just by simply listening to the message on Sunday. No, it is those who continue in the world. Say, you will abide, continue in my world, then you shall know the truth. Do you get what I'm talking about? All right? So you need to continue. And as you continue, you know more truth and more truth. And do you know something? Ignorance is terrible. Now, the, the, the scripture says, Osea, he said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. 
And knowledge only comes when you continue in the world. I'm talking of revelation knowledge, spiritual knowledge. That word destroy is the Hebrew word that is called dama. When I check it out, it means to bring to silence. It means to be undone, to fail, to perish. Now, so the reason why many Christians, when life challenges come, when the devil comes, when people bring negative prophecy, they are just quiet. They don't know what to say. The Bible says it's called the lack knowledge. The lack knowledge. Do you get what I'm talking about? If you know the word of God, the truth of God's word, it doesn't matter when the devil shows up to speak to you through enemies, through any man, you have a ready answer already. Do you get what I'm saying? You have a ready answer already because you know who you are, you know who God has made you to be in Christ. That's what knowledge will do for you. When you know, he said, Isaiah 5, 13, my people have gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. That's what he said. So, but you don't gain that knowledge by just uh, looking at your Bible once a week or once a month. No, you don't have knowledge like that. Now, the cure to ignorance is knowledge. And knowledge comes when you abide in the world, when you continue in the world. Do you get what I'm talking about? Read the Bible, find out what it says about you. Find out what Jesus said you are. Find out who Jesus says he has made you to be. And when you grow like that, you grow in knowledge. And when you grow in knowledge, the result will be freedom, complete freedom. You will know the truth. The truth will set you free. You know, we read that first John chapter 2 verse 14 before. He said, I have written to you young men because you are strong. What made them strong? He said, the word of God abides in you. The word of God. So knowledge make you strong. Knowledge make you strong. Proverbs 24 verse 5 says, A wise man is strong. A wise man. Yes, a man of knowledge increases strength. Oh, now, you know, we don't get strength, spiritual strength, by just asking God, Lord, strengthen me, Lord, strengthen me. No, go into the world. Read the word. Find, get revelation knowledge, truth of the word. That is what is going to make you strong. Do you get what I'm talking about? You don't get strong by somebody coming and lay hands on you and pouring anointing oil on you and prophesying over your life. Now, many Christians, that is what they are looking for. All right? Every service, somebody emptying a bottle of oil on you. That's not going to make you strong. That can help you temporarily, just for a while. Somebody just prophesying over you. No, you need to get into the word yourself. You need to get the word of God into you. He said, you are strong because the word abides in you. So I need to get the word into my mind, into my heart. And that makes me strong. So it is the word of God, the understanding, the revelation knowledge of the word that makes me strong. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Amen. No. So you need to do that yourself. If you want to live as an overcomer that you are, you need to cultivate the habit of an overcomer. You need to develop that lifestyle. Do you get what I'm talking about? And that's what I'm challenging you to do. And over, overcomers live on the wall. Overcomers abide in the wall. Overcomers read the world. Overcomers know what God says in his word about them. Do you get it? Overcomers go for knowledge. Overcomers meditate in the word of God. Look at Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. So overcomers read the story. They continue in the word of God. Now, as they get to know truth, they continue in the world. And they know more truth, greater truth. More truth about who they are. More truth about what Jesus has done for them. More truth about what, what they can do in Christ Jesus. More truth about their new nature in Christ. More truth about their new destiny in Christ. More truth about the blessings of God. Now, overcomers read. And then they understand they have been redeemed from every cause of the law. No man can place any cause on them. They have nothing to do with their family cause or their the generational cause anymore. Now, when you don't read the word of God, you won't know that. You, uh, so you still have a Christian that still go about looking for somebody to break generational cause over their life. What are you doing identifying with that? You're a new person in Christ. You have been redeemed from that. But because you do not know, you still identify with that and then you begin to see the same experiences in your life. It's you. You identify with it. No, your identity has changed. Yes. Your class has changed. Yes. You are not among those who are cursed. You are not among those who are blessed in Christ. But you need to know that. You need to. You must know it to understand that nobody can take it away from you. That is how overcome and live. They know the truth. They are establishing the truth. And devil and his false prophet cannot tell them otherwise. That's right. Do you get what I'm talking about? Now, that is how God wanted to live. And not only that, to meditate in the world. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, God told Joshua. Joshua was about uh, to take up the baton from Moses, you know, and 
He was not the leader. He was going to fight many battles. And God told him something. Joshua, you have to be strong and be courageous. And God told him where to get his strength from. Verse 8, now he said, This book of the law, the word of God that I've written, shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate. Let someone say meditate. meditate. He said meditate in it day and night. That you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous. And then you will have good source. Now God told Joshua I'm with you. That's what God told Joshua. I'm with you just as I was with Moses. I'll be with you. No king. No man shall be able to stand before you. God has given his promise. God has given his presence. God has given his anointing. But God told Joshua you need to live like that. You need to live as someone that knows that God is with him. You need to know as someone that know that he's wrong and God said the way to do it is to meditate in my world. Yeah. To meditate is to reflect deeply. To meditate is not just to hear me when I preach, I teach. It's to go back and think on it again and again and again. That's what it means to meditate. It is to think seriously. Many of us don't think seriously on the word of God. You are not living as an overcomer. That is why you are still acting as a failure. That's why you are still acting as a loser in life. That's why you are still struggling with something that by now you should have overcome there. You need to start thinking seriously on what the word of God says, by his stripes I am healed. Think on that. Not on doctor's report. Forget about doctor's report. Think on Christ. What he said he did. You have healing. Think on that. What does it mean to be healed? Think on what the word of God says. It means to dwell on anything in your thought. Many of us, we keep turning over in our thoughts, in our mind, what somebody said to us two years ago, three years ago. What have you got to do with that? That's not helping you. What you should be turning in your thoughts, in your mind, is what God says. Yes. Amen. What you had yes. from some teaching of the word of God, that is what you should be thinking, turning in your heart. It means to keep your mind, that's what it means to meditate, to keep your mind fixed on something. Amen. Keep your mind fixed on the word of God. I am blessed. I am not caused. All right? I am an overcomer. I am a champion. More than conqueror. I'm a winner. I'm a success. I'm not a failure. I'm not a captive. I'm not a, 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 I'm not a victim anymore. I'm not a slave anymore. I'm a king unto God. I'm a priest unto God. Fix your mind on that. Don't fix your mind on things that are going wrong. Don't fix your mind on the dreams and the negative dreams and prophecy. Many people write them down and all that. What are you doing with that? What are you doing with that? Don't fix your mind on that. Don't keep checking that negative record, that negative report. No. Fix your mind on the truth. And this is the truth. What God says about you in his word. Amen. That's what it means to meditate. Fix your mind on it. It means to consider carefully and deeply. I love this. To meditate means to think intently and at length. That's what it means. To think for long. Stay there and think on the word of God. All right? The message that you hear, think on it. Don't just hear and forget about it. No, keep thinking. Keep thinking. Tell somebody to say, keep thinking. <laughs> All right? Keep thinking. Keep thinking on it. And do you know something as we close? Do you know how overcomer live? Now, overcomer don't just uh, read the word of God. They don't just study the word of God. They don't just meditate in the word of God. Now listen to this. Overcomers confess the word of God. Alright? Overcomers believe what God says and they boldly declare what God has said. We read Hebrews chapter 13 while we are praying. He said, let your con conduct, Hebrews 13, 5 and 6, let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you are. For he himself has said, God himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we may well boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man can do to me. That is what overcomers do. Yeah. That is the lifestyle of the overcomer. Overcomers speak the word of God. Are you with me? Overcomers boldly declare every promise of God concerning them. Overcomers are not afraid to say the truth. What God has already said about them. I am healed by the stripes of Jesus. I'm still feeling pain all over my body. People can still see the symptom. But I am healed by the stripes of Jesus. They don't deny natural reality. But they know the word of God is spiritual reality. And it is greater. And the more they say it, the more they confess it. It's going to swallow up all that symptom. The more I declare what Christ has already done for me. By his stripes, he has procured healing for me. He has purchased healing. When I have pain in my 
body when I have symptoms, I keep declaring what he said because that is what I believe. It's just a matter of time. Do you know something? What God has said is going to swallow up every other thing that you see. It's going to wipe it off. That's the way spiritual trends work. So that is the lifestyle overcomer. And that should be your lifestyle. You know, by repeating those negative reports and negative things, uh, he said this, uh, they said this. No, what about what God said? Yes. Boldly say it all the time. When somebody wakes you up in the night, that should be on your lips. That should be on your lips. When you wake up and you just had a nightmare or bad dream, what God said, that is what you should boldly declare. Not that negative dream, not looking for a prophet to tell the dream that you are, so that the person will exploit you and take you to a river to bait for you. No. You know the word of God. Boldly declare what the word of the Lord has said. Let them take counsel, it shall come to know. Let them speak the word, it shall not stand. This one shall not stand. That is what God said. And that is what you should boldly declare. That is the way overcome and leave. That's the way to overcome and leave. And do you know something? Overcomers obey the teachings of Christ. Overcomers believe the word of God and they obey. If God says it, alright, then they are ready to go with it. They are ready to embrace it. They are ready to obey. That is the lifestyle of overcomer. I close with this scripture, the book of James, the book of James chapter 1, I read from verse 21. Now listen to this. The word of God is the sword of the spirit when you open your mouth and speak it with boldness and conviction. That is when it is the word of the spirit. Sword of the spirit. Now listen to this. Now the word of God in the Bible, now listen Listen to this. Does no good to you until you open it, you read it, know what it says, believe it, meditate in it, and boldly declare it. Now, you see, uh, I remember I went somewhere. Sometimes they come in to come and pray. And then uh, I, I, I went to the room, and then I saw the Bible. And I said, what, why, why, why are you using your Bible as a pillow? You know, and he put the Bible as a pillow. And I said, well, what is that going to do for you? And he said, yes, I put some night. I said, it doesn't matter the psalm you open. It doesn't matter. Now, this one does nothing. Are you with me? Yeah. It's just a letter. It's just written there. All right? Yeah. It is when it is in your heart, when yeah. it is in your mind. Yeah. That is when it is powerful. Yeah. It is when it is in your mouth, when yeah. you speak it. I said, no, close this one. This one is not going to do anything. Are you with me? Now, what what is you reading it? That's why you have it to read it, to know what it says, to believe it, meditate in it, and boldly declare it. Yeah. And I said, look, it is the word of God in your mouth. That is what works like a sword. It is not the word of God that you open in the Bible and put your head on it. No, it's not going to do anything. Get something cushion, something soft. This one is hard. Don't use this one as a pillow. Alright? Put it in your heart, not on the bed. Now, that is what you need to do with the word of God. Alright? That is how overcomer lives. That's how overcomer lives. I close with this scripture, James chapter 1. Overcomers obey the word of God, all right? Therefore lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted wall which is able to save your soul. Be doers, but be doers of the wall. So overcomers are doers of the wall. That is the lifestyle of the overcomer. They practice whatever the word of God says. They obey the teachings of Christ, all right? Oh, pastor, I don't know. So that is in the Bible. So God asked me to do this. Yes, I'm doing it. That is the lifestyle of overcomers. All right? He said, not hearers. So overcomers are not just people who hear, hear, and they do nothing. Deceiving yourself. 23, for if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like a man observing his natural face in the mirror. For he observe himself, goes away, and immediately forget what kind of man he was. Now, don't be like that man, all right? Don't be like someone that stands before a mirror, and then he looks at himself, and the mirror says, uh, your, 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 your hair is not uh, properly fixed. Uh, this is not good, this is not looking good and the person just look at it all right, and then walks away and does nothing about it alright, many people that's what they do with the word of God, oh yes, the word of God says I should be a cheerful giver the word of God says I should pray without ceasing the word of God says I should meditate in the word of God the word of God says I should not forsake the assembly of God's people but they don't do anything about it <laughs> they still continue their own lifestyle, no you are not going to express the, the overcoming nature that you have. You are still going to be living as, as old creation. No, yes. new creation are programmed to live by the word of God. 
to obey the word of God. Verse 25 as I close. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty. That's the word of God. And continues in it. You see the emphasis? Not just looking on Sunday. Continue. Monday throughout uh, uh, the week. Continue in the word of God. And do not be a forgetful hearer. And it's not a forgetful hearer. But a doer of the word. This one shall be blessed in what it does. I wanted to rise to your feet this morning. I wanted to make this declaration. I wanted to declare this morning who you are now in Christ. He who is born of God is an overcomer. I wanted to boldly declare I am born of God. I am born of God. I wanted to say with every strength that you are. I wanted to say with confidence. Say I am born of God. I am born of God. I am born as an overcomer. I, am born I want someone to say I am not going to be an overcomer. I am already an overcomer. I wanted to say Lord I say I'm not going to be a winner. I am already a winner. I want to declare I am not trying to overcome. I have overcome already. I want to declare I've overcome sin. I have overcome the flesh. I've overcome the world. I've overcome the devil and all challenges of life. Through the Lord Jesus Christ. I want someone to declare I am not looking for victory. I have victory already. I want to declare say I have got the victory. Through Christ Jesus. I want someone to declare in the name of Jesus. I will manifest the victory. I will demonstrate the victory. I will express the victory. I have a new name. I have a new nature. I have a new identity. I am an overcomer. That is who I am. I am more than conqueror. I'm a champion in Christ. I'm a winner in Christ. I am no longer a slave. I am a son of God. I am a king unto God. And I will live just like that. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. It is time to begin to live as overcomer that you are. You are an overcomer. Stop living. Stop living as a loser. Stop thinking like that. Stop acting like that. Stop speaking like that. When somebody call a loser, that is not who you are. Don't answer to that. Don't answer that anymore. Things have changed. If anyone is in Christ, it's a new creation. You are in Christ now. You are a new creation. You used to be a loser. You are no longer a loser. You used to be a failure. You are no longer a failure. And do you know what? you need to know that. You need to be rooted in that. You need to be established in that. Now don't mind situation circumstances. They can't change who you are if you don't subscribe to them. Oh, thank you Lord Jesus. Thank you Lord Jesus. Oh, limbra lebo shetelia lingero zopra handa liboye yikatalia limbre lebo sotelia. What are you facing this morning? What is the challenge that you are facing? What are the battles that are lined up against you? What are the adversaries that have come against so I wanted to see yourself have a clear picture of someone who overcame. You are that person. You are an overcomer. You are a winner. Let the word of God paint a clear picture in your mind of your new identity in Christ. Your new status. Your new condition. Your new position in Christ. You have been raised together with Christ. You are seated together with Christ in heavenly places. Far above all principalities and power. There is nothing that comes against you. That Christ has not defeated for you. There is no enemy that rises against you that Christ has not spoiled and designed through the cross. It is time to begin to see yourself like that. See yourself in the light of the world. That is how overcome and leaves. They live with a clear picture in their mind of what the word of God says. Overcome our mindset is the word of God mindset. Overcome our thinking is the word of God. Overcome our things, the thought of the word of God. And this morning, that's what the Lord has put in my heart to challenge you with. You need to reprogram your mind with the word of God. You need to program yourself anew, anew. You need to purify your mind with the word of God. It is time to let it go. The past failure, it is time to let it go. Let it go. It does not really matter anymore. You are now a brand new person in Christ Jesus. You now have a new identity. It is time to strip that off you. Strip it off you. Strip it off you. Strip it off in your mind anymore. Don't take away. Get rid of that picture.
picture in your mind. Somebody said you are not good enough. Get rid of that picture. That is not what you should allow in your mind anymore. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are a child of the Most High God. You are clothed with the righteousness of God. God of the heaven loves you. God of heaven loves you. God is for you. He's never against you. He himself has said he will never leave you nor forsake you. It doesn't matter who has walked out on you. It doesn't matter who has run you down before. It is time to rise up as an overcomer, as a victor, as a champion. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, I pray this morning for everyone under the sound of my voice, Father. I pray, Lord, that your word will paint a clear picture of who they are in Christ Jesus now. That your children begin to see themselves who they are now and they begin to call themselves who they, you call them. Lord, that they begin to call ourselves overcomers, victors and champions and winners, Father. That we not allow, Lord, our past experiences, our present circumstances to change our nature and our identity, Father. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. I wanted to open your mouth and declare it. I overcome. Whatever I did, this sickness, I've overcome you. I've overcome this challenge. I've overcome. I'm a winner. I've overcome. I've overcome. I have overcome you. I've overcome this. I have overcome this. I have overcome this, I have overcome this. I have overcome this situation. I've overcome this sickness. I've overcome this battle. I am winner. I have prevailed. I have prevailed over you. I have conquered. Through Christ Jesus, I have conquered. Yes, I have overcome. I have overcome. Oh, Oh, this thing will not rule over me anymore. This emotion will not rule over me. Anger, you will not rule over me. Lust and immorality, you will not rule over me. Alcohol, you will not rule over me anymore. No, you will not rule over me anymore. I am free from you. I am free from sin. I have crucified the flesh. I am dead to sin. I'm alive in Christ Jesus. I have nothing to do with hereditary cause anymore. I have nothing to do with hereditary sickness anymore. I'm a brand new person in Christ Jesus. I have nothing to do with generational cause anymore. I am blessed in Christ Jesus. I am blessed in Christ Jesus. I've overcome family cause. I've overcome generational cause. It has nothing to do with me. No trace of it in my life anymore. Yes, I'm only who God says I am. What God said, that is the truth. What God said, that is the truth. Let God be true and every man a liar. Let God be true. Every man a liar. I regard what God says as the final authority. I regard what God says as the truth. I will hold on to that. I will believe what God says. I will declare what God says. I will experience what God says in my life. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. There are still many of us here. The Lord says, don't listen to this very well. You still, you, you, you still call yourself by, by a sickness. And then you wonder, why is it that this sickness has not gone away? It's because you have put that label on yourself. You wear it as a tag. It is time to get rid of it. Yes. Don't call yourself by that sickness anymore. That's what the Lord is saying to you. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. Get rid of that tag. Get rid of that. Don't, don't label yourself with that sickness anymore. By his stripes, you have been healed. By his stripes. The Bible says you are strong. That's what the Bible says. You are healthy. You are strong. You are strong. You are strong. Don't carry yourself. Don't tag yourself with that sickness. Don't tag yourself. Don't label. Don't don't wear it. Don't wear it. Don't wear it. Where will you are in Christ? Where will you are in Christ? Where will you are in Christ? Yes, Lord, we reject that label. We reject that label of that sickness right now. We strip it off now. We get rid of it right now. We refuse to answer that name again. That is not our name. That is not our name. We are not the sick. We are the healer. We are the healer. We are not the captives. We are the free one. We are the deliverer of the captives. We are not the weak. We are the strong one. Because the word of God abides in us. That's what God is saying to you. That's what God is saying to you.
Father, thank you, Father. We are that tag, we are that maybe, we are that new name, we are that with, uh, with no apology. I'm overcomer, I'm healed, I'm strong, I'm healed, I'm strong, I'm healed, I'm strong, I'm healed, I'm strong, I'm healthy, I have the peace of God, I have the joy of God, I'm champion, I'm more than conqueror, I'm not a failure, I'm a success, I am blessed in Christ, that is who I am, that is my name, that is my destiny, that is my identity. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We reject whatever names have called us. We reject whatever name people have called us that is contrary to the word of God. We reject it. We reject that name. I am not who they call me. I'm not a failure, they call me. I reject that. I reject that name. I refuse to be that. Whatever anyone has called me, that God has not called me, I reject that. 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 I refuse to answer that. I will not answer to that. I will not answer to that. I will not answer to that. I will only answer to what the word of God says. I will only answer to who Jesus called it. That's what I will answer to. That's what you should answer to. That's what you should answer to. That's what you should answer to. What you answer to, that is your experience. That becomes your experience. What you answer to, that is what becomes your reality. That's what becomes your reality. If anyone calls you anything that God has not called you, tell the person, I'm sorry, I just want to correct you. That is not my name. That's not my name. That's not my name. That's not who I am. That's not who I am. Don't agree with your feelings. Don't agree with your emotions. Only agree with the word of God. Only agree with what the word of God says. What the word of God says, that is the truth. That is the truth. Don't agree with your circumstances. Agree with the truth of God's word. Agree with that. Oh, really, Bo Zatalia, Nebo Sheketeliaba. Libre Lebo Zatalia, Nalebo Sheteliaba. Regret Lebo Saprahandebo. When you walk about in your new name and in your new identity, miracles become your experience. Favor becomes your experience. As you answer to only what God calls you, miracles and favor and blessings of God. That becomes your daily experience. Victory becomes your daily experience. Success becomes your daily experience. Favor becomes your daily experience. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, we receive your word. We receive the truth, Lord. We receive only what you have said concerning us. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Do you receive the word of God this morning? If you receive the word of God, can you shout the Lord? Amen. Amen. Glory to Jesus. Glory to the Lord. We hope you have been challenged, encouraged, and motivated to become more like Christ by today's teaching. If you would like to find out more about Errands of Revival and get additional teachings and materials for your healthy spiritual growth, visit our website today at www.eradsofrevival.org.uk Or if you would like to enroll at our School of Discipleship, visit our website www.theschoolofdiscipleship.org Dot UK. This teaching was made possible by the prayers and generous free will offering, donation, and gifts from partners like you. You are welcome into partnership with us today. For information on how to become a partner, please call 1-868-292-9270 or 1-868-703-5572. Or you can email us at info at erasofrevival.org.uk. Thanks for listening.